Hey there, I'm Lauren and this is Kirk. We've lived and traveled on our sailboat for the last three years, and now we're starting season number four with our baby girl, Renata. We uh, mentioned on our Patreon that we were having some issues with a dirty fuel tank. Last time on Sailing Solianus, amongst a laundry list of other projects, including fixing some rotten deck core, Kirk built a DIY fuel polishing system to clean our diesel. And one of our lovely patrons uh, told us that he worked for a fuel additive company that could nip our dirty fuel issue in the butt. Bud in the butt, I don't know. But they send us a package with popcorn as the packing material. <laughs> like what a cool environmentally friendly way to package small items. It's actual popcorn. I thought it was a joke at first that when they said they used popcorn that it was just like the little styrofoam popcorns. But no, it was literally popcorn. And for working in what is otherwise a very dirty industry of uh, diesel fuel and hydrocarbons and all of that stuff to use popcorn for their shipping materials is pretty freaking sweet. Good on you guys. That's fuel right. <laughs> I am setting up our fuel polishing system here because I just bought some new diesel. And I'm going to finish filling up our tank and add our fuel right additive. This little bottle treats 300 gallons of fuel uh, at a 1 to 6,000 ratio. This product comes from Canada, uh, so all of the instructions online are in um, liters and milliliters, yet they sent us a bottle that is in ounces. <laughs> so we had to like go back and forth and back and forth. but. Uh, we decided we're putting in one sixth of this bottle because we have a 50 gallon fuel tank and I just kind of randomly drew some <laughs> hash marks on the back. <laughs> and after all of that um, math, we just decided we're gonna splash a little bit. <laughs> they say it doesn't have to be a perfect ratio, so I'm not that worried about it. And why are we cleaning our fuel? We are cleaning our fuel because it has a bunch of nasty sludge in the bottom. Um, we've had really good luck with our fuel tank the last few years until it leaked and then we decided this year that we were gonna pump it all out so that um, if it did leak there would only be like the tiniest little bit in the bottom but I think what happened is that all of that air and the condensation and the heat and cool changes in the summer while the boat was on in storage just allowed an uh, environment for like the black diesel sludge to grow in the tank so we're gonna try this fuel additive. I've got my fuel polisher. Um, we've already run uh, the fuel polisher for quite a while and you can see there's already a bunch of sludge in this fuel filter. So we're, we're doing something, it's working. Uh, yeah. Cool story, bro. Cool story. Boats. What's happening here? Hey. Huh, is it lunch time for the babe? Yeah? Okay. Go for it. <laughs> Alright. So what happened? <laughs> well, I was playing in a field full of tulips with my beautiful friends. Oh. Or I was in a beautiful field full of tulips with my friends. I was in a... I, I would play with my friends in, in a, a field, field full of beautiful, beautiful tulips. tulips. Nailed it. And as I heard that line, a light bulb went off. No way. Seriously? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but while I was over there running the fuel polisher, the pump that I bought has two alligator clips. I had them clipped to the foremost battery in our four battery bank. And I'm like, well, shoot, I don't know how much power this is drawing. If I'm pulling from one battery, that's going to imbalance our battery bank. So I'm like trying to figure out like how could I, like, I don't want to open up the other compartments to connect to a different battery and so I realized also that I don't know how much it's drawing if I connected the negative to the other side of the battery shunt that it would tell me on the battery monitor 
how much it's drawing. And also, it would spread out the load across the whole battery bank. So I just unclipped the negative and clipped it onto the other side of the battery shunt and then I immediately saw on the battery monitor exactly how much power it was drawing. Now oh, that's more accurate. And now I've spread out the load and I've like solved every problem with one little simple change of how you think about the situation. Aren't you smart? That's super cool. <laughs> Winning. Small wins. Mm. And you like that bunny book. Hmm? No comment. No comment. So this is the night before we get moved over to the other yard. For launching. For launching. We have walked this path probably 50, 100 times. So this path is almost connected to Jay and our boatyard, which is the first yard that we hauled out in after our first season on the boat. And we are back for a second time. A second time, and this is our third season now. Yeah, right? yeah. The first time we were here, we had ideas and plans of starting a family. And the second time we were here, I was pregnant. <laughs> and now the third time- That was time, when we just hauled out, yeah. Yeah. Just a few months ago. We have a baby. Yeah, it's interesting how many different conversations we've had walking down this path and how many decisions we've made and problems we've solved and- About life, about- the boat. Personal stuff, the boat, yeah. yeah. Trying to make decisions about what bottom paint to use and what to do about our chain plates and what to do about our deck and yeah. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, this path has given us a little bit of solace in the boatyard. It's like our escape, mm. all this green and beautiful flora and fauna. I almost stepped on a snake yesterday. This is where I saw my first wild boar. Ah, uh, that's cool. And yeah. we saw a bobcat. Oh, no, I'm not wearing my suit. Oh, there's a freaking bobcat! Oh, I'm not wearing my And all sorts of turtles, and we just saw and snake Bunny rabbits, yeah. and yeah. It's been great being able to get out of the boat yard and walk down this beautiful path <laughs> at sunset. Huh? You're driving us in circles. There we go. You dizzy? Where are you driving us, huh? Where are you driving us? Where are you driving us? Was that her squeal or you? Yeah, that was her. That was her? Yeah. <laughs> we have a delivery for one sack of potatoes. <laughs> oh. oh, no, oh. now it's a baby. We got a baby. Baby on board. Oh, a sack of potatoes. What do we got? We got diced tomatoes. Okay. These are fire roasted diced tomatoes. We call those fire toms. All right, what's next? A rondo bean. Corn. Ooh, this is one of our favorites. Coconut milk. We call this cocoa. From empty to perfectly filled. Here we go again. Filling to film what really matters. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, but. Well, do you want to take it all out and put it back in now that you know how to do it? Um, I'll pass. Okay. The boat's looking better. Yeah. Not much left to put away. Mm. 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 Oh, hello. Oh, hello. How you doing? Good. So, 
It's moving day. We leave solid ground today to hang in the slings tonight. And tonight we fly. <laughs> Tomorrow we float. Tomorrow we float. I just realized we're filming this during like yeah. some sort of siren test. Major emergency at the cement making plant. <laughs> the cement is solidifying. Quick, quick, more water. I don't know. I don't know what kind of emergency you'd have. Someone's feet are stuck in the cement. I don't know what, what emergency are they. Someone's and they can't get up. Yeah. The cement mixer is rolling away. Do you want me to keep rolling? No. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay by yourself for a little bit? Yeah, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do the center board. Alright. Hey! Going in or wait? Going in. We're uh, gonna paint the center board. Uh, yeah. What are you driving that thing? Holy smokes. Oh, uh, that goes down to like eight feet. Otherwise it's like four and a quarter. It swings out of there, huh? Yeah. I, I don't I don't mean to uh, be rude, but I overheard your conversation earlier when you said uh, just because I'm not helping you doesn't mean I'm not trying to help you. I thought that was perfect. That like sums up everything I feel like in a relationship. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you're not helping. I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Thank you. Okay, tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow we splash. Woohoo! So, are you ready for tomorrow? Yeah, I think so. I think we got a lot to do. Still? Yeah, I mean, just it's a lot because of her. Yeah. Like, it's not necessarily a lot, but. Yeah. All the feeds and the naps and the. Yeah. Playtime and the. Exactly. Being a baby. What do you think about a pre-splash cocktail. Ooh. Is that an appropriate? Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> Is that something to celebrate? Pre-splash? Pre the fact that we made it over here with the boat in one piece? Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I think just making it through the day with a baby is something to celebrate. Mm. Yeah. Well... We're not doing drinks every night anymore, right? No. We used to do that, but I'm trying to dial it back a little bit. The dad bod's kicking in. <laughs> Were you pushing that out? I'm just kind of standing weird. <laughs> We're going in the water. That means we need to lift up this floorboard right here in just a couple minutes and check to make sure that the centerboard trunk is not leaking. It is just after eight in the morning. Everyone is up bright and early, ready to get boats launched. Mr. Monkey falling into the belch. So far so good. Now we just gotta finish loading everything up and figure out our new mainsail situation. We got the Krispies. <laughs> Brand new mainsail. <laughs> Check this out. 
There's the business end right there. Someone's making some racket down the wall. <laughs> Renata's providing color commentary. <laughs> Sweet. Now I just gotta take all the old hardware off the other sail. Our new mainsail from Precision Sails arrived requiring the hardware from our old main to ensure it would properly attach to the mast and boom. This though, like pretty much any other boat project, required a bit of customization. I just gotta figure out how to get it all on the new sail. Well, that ain't gonna work. Our hardware is not gonna fit on the headboard of our new sail. So I'm gonna use my go-to paracord. This is actually 750 pound braking strength. So I put a few lashings on it, should be plenty strong. Hopefully it'll work for now. doing a impromptu uh, plumbing project here. Bigger! Okay. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> We've been having a plumbing leak in our locker here for years. I replumbed it last year. Thought I fixed it and it still leaks. So I've decided to revamp it real quick and I'm gonna put all the plumbing connections down in the bilge. It's all after the accumulator tank, so if the fittings still leak, it's just gonna leak into our bilge and it's only gonna leak out of the hose from the accumulator tank, which is above our water tanks, out. So we're not gonna like drain our entire tanks just because a plumbing fitting leaks. But I'm just sick of it leaking into onto our, our wood. wood. It can go to the bilge and we'll hear the bilge run and we'll know that it's leaking, but it's not gonna do any more damage to the boat, which is what it's been doing for the last here. Or maybe it won't leak anymore. Or maybe, just maybe. <laughs> here, so that needs to be pulled back even further. Okay. Yeah. Tell me when. Oh, uh, that's good. Okay. Two minutes away from testing the power. Two minutes away? Yeah. From Thank testing you. water? Testing water. <laughs> from testing power? Yeah. You just so wish this was an Electrical. electronics project. Yeah. I think I like electrical better than all the other trades. It just kind of makes sense to me. You know immediately if you did it wrong. <laughs> for better or for worse. Plumbing seems like it's a thing that can just always fail at the worst times. It's more of a, an art, more of a witchcraft. I think it's more of a witchcraft for sure. Okay, what happened? Bob's your uncle. <laughs> nice. You just ran the water? Yeah, just ran the water and there doesn't appear to be any leaks. I don't have anything on my hands. So I just gotta zip tie the hoses together so they stay put when the pump pumps. The hoses don't go dancing like the guys. The used car lot Used guys. car lot guys, yeah. yeah. That's what happens when the pumps get pressurized. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's hungry, dehydrated. Yeah, and... <laughs> I got all sorts of issues going on. Let's put this boat back together. So, we are crammed on the, to the smallest settee because this and that. I wanted to say, you whip that out and like, okay, I'm not gonna say that. I wanted to say that you wham bam, thank you ma'am, this project. <laughs> I wanted to say <laughs> that <laughs> You jackhammered through this project. I wanted to say <laughs> that you f***ed that real good. Like. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say that you pounded this out. <laughs> Why? Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> like last year, you worked on this plumbing project probably all day. Yeah, but I did a lot more. I installed the strainer, the new deck fill with that like giant one inch oh, that's true. pipe that was really hard to move. I did the whole accumulator tank. Like this was. Oh, okay. This was cake? Yeah. But. Yeah, from start to finish, like realizing what I. or figuring out what I needed, going to the store, yeah. getting it, 
coming back and having it done was like under an hour and yeah. 20 minutes. You knew what, what size hoses you needed, you knew the whatever other materials you needed. We, you knew of materials that we had in the boat already. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know. Experience. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> or. That's all I wanted to say. Or also known as redoing projects you've already done once the wrong way, yeah. the right way. <laughs> it gets easier. <laughs> On today's game show, Kirk and Lauren spend two weeks trying to make it 20 miles. <laughs> it's looking rather grim there for a moment. Will they make it or won't they?